let's move to the next one because I want to finish the segmentation today and then move on to the next topic in the next session. So we saw an encoder decoder architecture when we were doing UNET and those were doing very good. We saw a spatial pyramid pooling when we were considering deep lab. Now the idea of this paper is deep lab version three plus is that you're gonna use both of them. You're gonna use spatial pyramid pooling and then you're gonna use encoder decoder architecture. So you have some encoder, you have some decoder. Here you're gonna have some encoder, you're gonna have spatial pyramid pooling, but then you're gonna have less of those shortcut connections rather than having them at every layer. You're gonna have few of them to copy and paste your information. This is gonna help you uh, preserve local information and the spatial pyramid pooling is gonna give you context. And these are with atrus convolutions. To be more exact about, about the architecture, you have an image, you have an encoder, you have a decoder. The encoder is gonna have atrus convolutions with different rates. You can have one by one convolution, three by three convolution with a rate of six, rate of 12, rate of 18, and you can pull your image entirely. You can concatenate them. You do a one by one convolution to reduce the dimension. That's the encoder. This is the encoded information now. Then you have your decoder, which is gonna take the output of your address convolution. It's gonna do a dimensionality reduction. What you do now is concatenate the output of your encoder and the output of your previous layers in the decoder. So up until this point, we are here. So this part is a copy and paste from this layer to the next one, from the encoder to the decoder. And this arrow up there is this arrow here. And the rest of it, you're gonna do a concatenation. And then you're gonna do a three by three convolution, you have sample, and then you do your predictions. And then they're gonna have as their backbone, the exception network, because we know that exception was, was an efficient network architecture and we covered it when we were doing image classification, but it's exception with, a, with the pooling layers being replaced by separable convolutions with a stride of two. So rather than pooling, you're gonna do convolution. So that's the only change. And here are some predictions of the model, qualitatively and quantitatively. And you can study the effect of the one by one convolution in the decoder, how important that is, what, what is a good dimension for you to reduce to, Apparently 48 is the best one. It's giving you the best mean intersection over union. And you can study the effect of this three by three convolution. How many of them do you need to have? So two layers of that, three by three and 256 channel is giving you the best. And there is a debate between taking uh, one convolution from one layer to the next one, which one should we take? And apparently taking count two is the best. I think, uh, we are out of time. For those of you who have a question, you can stay and ask. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. I, had a, I was wondering if you go back to the, the pyramid. Uh, I'm still trying to gain like an intuition of how this, so th what I'm trying to like imagine, and I was wondering if you could tell me if this is like correct or not, is what this is doing essentially is taking the right half of the U and like squishing it down and doing all of your different sort of spatial things on the same feature vector. Right, because you're doing it sort of taking all the information and then taking subsets of the information and then combining. Um, is that sort of a, a decent way to think about it? So you are doing your pooling at multiple different states. One of your pooling is pooling the global information, which is the red one. The other one is pooling local information on the top left, top right, lower left, lower right of your feature map. and for the other ones, you get the idea. So it's global information, local information on the top left, top right, et cetera, and so on. And then you concatenate all of that information together. Yeah. Whereas with like a UNET, you're you're taking the upsampled version of your global information to get more localized, right? Because you're taking like you're you're upsampling first and then doing another uh, convolution. But here you're saying rather than having them sort of crosstalk, you're doing it all. Um, it's like separately. Yes. Yeah, so for UNET, you want it to extract more local information from one layer to the next one, or at least try to lose as little as possible. 
because their boundaries matter to you. But here, it's not a matter of boundaries. It's a matter of context. Why would a network, why would the network think that an object on water should be classified as a car? Because it hasn't seen. Maybe it's seeing a house here and it's confusing it. Because if you only pull the global information, then it's looking at this part. But if you pull on this local part of your image, you're going to see more of the water. You're going to see more of the context. Okay, cool. Any other questions?